Boys and girls, what it do? It is the Impact Lounge and I am BQ and we are starting something different here on the channel. We're going to be talking a little bit of explosion every week and uh, that little review is going to be handled by Ro the Great, one of my co-hosts and he's on the Impact Review each and every week. So we're going to be talking a little bit about explosion. Obviously, explosion has the exclusive match around the ring and the throwback. Um, just a little something different here for the channel, a little extra content for you guys, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. What's going on, folks? Thanks for tuning into the Impact Lounge. Right now, you have myself, Ro the Great, and we're going to be doing something new where I'm going to be doing so something new where I'm going to be reviewing Explosion. For those of you who aren't familiar with Explosion, it's a show that's now aired on the GWN app, so you can check it out. Usually it's uploaded, I want to say, on the weekends or so. But usually the format is it's a match, then you get a flashback match, you get an around the ring with the wrestler, and then sometimes they'll do, well, most of the time they do the review of what happened on Impact, you know, the biggest events or whatnot. So before I dive in, um, if you're not a subscriber, make sure to subscribe. Also give a like, thumbs up, thumbs down, it doesn't matter. Uh, um, and as well as drop a comment as well. Um, your guys' uh, feedback is important to all of us. So yeah. So with now that it's out of the way, let's uh, dive in. So our feature match for Explosion was Rosemary versus Amber Nova. Now, Amber Nova, she's not signed to the roster. It looks like she's just somebody that they use as a, you know, an enhancement talent to put over fellow knockouts. But in this match, I mean, she shows some strides, you know, in her previous matches, you know, th stuff has come across as real clunky. But um, she had some spots in here, but pretty much the match was presented to showcase Rosemary, make Ro Rosemary look strong, you know, as she's in a feud with Taya. Um, you know, the one big thing that I loved about this match was, uh, Rosemary, and it seems now this is the second time I've seen her, she's incorporated the spear in her moveset, and it's used as a transition into the Red Wedding, and she did it here, and I mean, this is one of the baddest spears I've seen in some time, you know, so, you know, it's pretty neat, Rosemary gets the win, like I said, you know, basic match, nothing too spectacular, Amber Nova was able to get a little bit in, but, the match was designed to make Rosemary look strong heading into her inevitable matchup with Taya. I'm assuming that's going to go on at the pay-per-view, so we'll just have to wait and see. Next, we get Around the Ring with OVE's Dave Chris. For those of you who don't know who Dave Chris is, he's the brother, the non-blonde one. So... You know, Josh is around with him. You know, they're talking. Chris is talking about how he likes dogs and how he enjoys going to concerts and how he loves the school and most of all loves Ohio. You know, the biggest thing w w that he kept talking about his love for Ohio was Ohio had nice people. You know, there's not enough nice people in the world. You know, everywhere else, you know, people, you know, don't really care. And I guess there's some truth to it. I don't know if that just applies to Ohio. I'm sure you can find various cities across the United States and, you know, a good crop of people. But, yeah, you know, it, it was nice. I, I like that they do these just because it's nice sometimes to see a wrestler out of their character. You know, you kind of get that genuine feel. And that's what I kind of got. So um, it was nice. Next, we get our throwback match, and this is from No Surrender 2012. The, the participants was Bully Ray versus James Storm, and the implications were the Bound for Glory series. Now, I'm just going to be honest, with the Bound for Glory series, and I'm not saying this one in particular, but the one that just really just leaves a bad taste in my mouth is the one that they had, I want to say, three years ago where they had the you know it just dragged out so much and i and i know ec3 ended up winning but after that i was like i never want to hear bound for glory series again and i'm glad that the company hasn't decided to go back to it i want to say the past bound for glories i don't think they implemented it so thank god but i mean if you're a fan of it teach his own but anyways this match um james storm you know was still trying to get back in the world title hunt you know, for his short-lived title reign when he originally won it from Kurt Angle, which was a couple years back, and then Bully Ray. 
I, I want to say at this time, I don't know if he had been champion yet, but uh, he was, you know, all into the character, all committed. And anyways, you know, the match was going fine, but in typical TNA fashion, they resorted to the ref bumps. I mean, there wasn't one, there wasn't two, but there was three ref bumps. And then you had Bobby Roode come out and cost James Storm the match with the beer bottle. So a match that has some potential was pretty much overbooked and you know it just it made it just typical tna stuff you know with the participants in the match they could have done so much more but sometimes and they've gone better with it now but in the past especially they've liked to go to the well far too much to my liking finally we get our i don't want to say flashback but pretty much a match that they reviewed from the most previous impact episode which was Matt Seidel versus Rohit Raju. Um, if you want some more thoughts on this match in the most recent Impact review, BQ and I really dive in, into it. But um, just just some brief stuff. You know, with Josh, I mean, I'm sorry, not Josh. With Matt doing the whole spiritual advisor thing, in this match, there really wasn't much follow-up from it. If you guys remember in the previous Impact where Josh was revealed as the spiritual advisor, you know, that, you know, it left off at that. So, you know, we really needed to see some follow-up. And we really didn't get that. It was just a standard match. You know, Rohit Raju, he didn't, you know, I don't want to say get squashed, but, you know, he got a little bit of offense in. And I know one criticism that uh, BQ had, and you'll, you'll see it in this match as well, too, if you haven't already, was how Rohit Raju had to kind of position himself to take the shooting star press. And one thing we had talked about on the review was, you know, side outs should probably do something to set them up where the guy falls into place. So then it doesn't look as fake seeing a guy move into position to hit the move. But, um, you know, outside of that, you know, you know, it was just to carry on with Seidel and Josh Matthews, although there was, like I said, no follow-up. And, you know, the last thing I'll point out is the thing with Rohit Raju, you know, we've heard of the Desi Hit Squad, but, you know, they, they've talked about it, but we haven't seen anything. And I'm kind of confused with his character as, is he a face or a heel? So that's something to look out for. Maybe we'll be getting him to debut at Redemption. We just have to wait and see. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, this is the first installment. Um, I'm going to be reviewing the explosion. Like I said, it's a short format, one match as far as well as uh, around the ring with the wrestler. They have a flashback and then a match from the most recent impact. So just share your thoughts. Uh, give it a like. Tell, let me know what you guys think. And um, till then, you guys take care.